In the second part of our document, we've got a little bit more practical use of local storage. We're going to be using the field down here to be able to add numbers to a total. And we're going to use local storage to store that total for us, even if the browser's closed. We'll also take a look at how to clear the total. So let's go back to our document and set some things up. First of all, we've got a number field up here at the top with an ID of number. And we've got a button set up for our users to click on, which will call a function called add to total. And of course, for displaying the total, we've got a paragraph here that says total equals and a span tag with an ID of total that we can fill up with the actual value. Let's go down and set up our functions first. With our add to total feature, we need some variable that's going to keep track of the total for us. So let me create that first. I'll set it equal to zero at the very beginning. Next, we're going to need a variable that represents the total that's stored in local storage. Since we'll be adding to that number, I'll call that old total. And I'll set it equal to a local storage variable that we'll have to make later called total. Whenever my user enters a number and clicks the add number to total button, I want this function to add these two numbers together. So we'll set up total as equal to the old total plus whatever the new number is stored in the field. And we'll use get element by ID to get that. This time we're looking for the field called number. And we're looking for the value that's entered into that field. Now, of course, the last thing I want to do is display the total on the total line. So let's set that up here too. I'll use document get element by ID. And we're looking for the one called total. This time it's part of a paragraph, so we'll use inner HTML, and we'll simply set that equal to the total we calculated. Now let's try it out. I'll save my changes. We'll refresh our page, and this time I'm going to go down to the number field, and I'll just enter in a number like 3, and let's see if it adds it to our total. When I click in here, you can see it says undefined and then 3. So we've got a little bit of problem with our code. And it has to do with how local storage numbers are stored. First of all, it's not stored as a number at all. It's stored as text. In fact, everything stored in a local storage variable will be stored as text. In our code here, where we're looking up the local storage total, I'll use the number function to convert this from text to a number. I'll just type number with a capital N in front of it and enclose the local storage variable here completely in parentheses. Now that old total variable will be a number instead of something undefined. Now we also need to deal with this inside of our entry fields as well. So when we get the element number here, let's also convert that to a number. I'll just use the number function again. And then we'll set the parentheses around that entire value. Now we also need to change our logic a little bit. For instance, we haven't even defined what local storage total is yet. So obviously sometimes, especially the first time we try to use it, it's going to be undefined. So we'll have to take that into account. I'll do that really quickly with an if statement. Right after we assign the old total value, let's add in an if statement. And what we'll do is check to see if old total is greater than zero. That would mean there's some value added to it. I'll set up grouping braces for my if statement. And I'll include this statement up here at the top where we add old total to the new number. Then I can add an else block for when the local storage total variable is not defined. We'll add grouping braces for that as well. And inside the else block, we'll just calculate total from the new value instead of adding the old total value to it. So I'll copy the statement we wrote last time, paste it into our else block, and we'll remove the first part where we add old total to it. And that way the total will just be the number in the element field. Now we need to do one more thing at the end, and that is assign our local storage total so it's stored for the next time. So right here at the bottom of our function, I'll set local storage total equal to the total value that we calculated. That way the current page's total is stored. And the next time we come to the page, old total will be whatever the current total was, and we can use the new value to add to that. Now there's one more thing we need to set up if we want to test this. And that is, we need a way to remove old local storage values. 
As you can see from our last test, we have the value of undefined 3 stored in there as our local storage total. And we want to clear that out. Fortunately, it's really easy to clear these local storage variables with just one function call. Now I've already got a button inserted onto the page, and it has an onClick event that calls the clearTotal function. And here's our clearTotal function down here. So let's add our function call to that. I'll just go to local storage, and we'll call the clear function. This clears all local variables on the page. So even our name will be cleared up at the top. Now we're almost ready to test. But the only place that I actually place the total on the screen is inside of our add to total function. Right down here, we use document get element by ID, and we place the total on the page. So if we test it right now, it'll still say undefined three. To make sure the total gets updated, let's add it to the window on load function up here at the top. I'll just go to document, get element by ID. And instead of assigning the total variable, because it's not here, it's down in this function, let's assign this to the local storage total variable. Now I think we're ready to try it out. Let's save all of our changes. Let's go back out and refresh the page. And at first, we can see that our variables are still stored there, but let's try the clear total button first. That should clear all of our stored variables. I'll refresh the page again. And this time you can see that both of our variables have been reset. Now let's try adding our number to a total. I'll just use the number three that's already in here. And there you can see my total's three. If I click it again, you can see that it adds on to my total. And I'll change it to five this time, just to show that it's correctly updating the total with each click. And just like before, I can close this browser completely Go back out and re-navigate to the page. And you can see that my total is still kept from the last time. And we could still add to it. Now sometimes you will want your variables to expire after one session. And we can do that with the local storage option as well. We simply use session storage instead. So let's go back to our document and switch this over to session storage. Basically, any place that you called out local storage before, Simply change the local to session. Now you can see I'm going to session storage first name. I'll just copy session storage, and we'll work our way through the rest of the code. Here, we'll do session storage total. We'll even set session storage for the first name. And I need to replace it in all of our total calculations down here in the add to total function. I'll even change over my clear statement to session storage. Let's save our changes, and we'll go back out and refresh the page. The first thing I want to do is clear all the totals so that everything's all cleaned out. And then I'll try to add a number to our total. You can see that with session storage, it works just like before. My total gets added to. But what's different in this case is if I close the browser or the tab containing the page and go back out and navigate to the page, when it comes back up, it hasn't saved my values from last time. Officially, a session ends whenever the tab is closed or the browser itself is closed. So as long as the browser stays open, the variables will be there and you can use them in your JavaScript pages.